Hello and welcome to this week's Off the Court, which is week number, what, 56 in the Big Brother house, Tamsin Greenway? I don't know. I've given up, but the sun is shining, Caroline Barker, so that's got to put a smile on all our faces. The sun is shining. We have a legal spring in our step, as in we are observing footwork at all times. Uh, Speaking of which, what have you done this week in netball form, taking it into real life? (laughs) Not a lot. I'm I'm trying to do some more drills. I'm trying to do some more drill skills and having fun in between doing this malarkey. Yeah, that malarkey is attached to Casey Jacks. Nothing else is just going on there in the picture as well. <laughs> and Casey Jacks, part of Off the Court this week, as are you. Hashtag Off the Cart to be part of it throughout the week as well. Get to your questions, your social, and Townsend Stewart a little bit later on. We'll also hear from the Sunshine Coast, and Miss Sunshine herself, Peace Roscovia, joins us. Yes, Casey Jacks, that's coming up later, including mm-hmm. the Gurgles. We're going to start, though, with the news this week that Saracens Mavericks have become the latest team to furlough their players and their staff. They joined Surrey Storm and Manchester Thunder in taking up the government scheme. Let's hear from Manchester Thunder coach, Super League winning coach, Karen Gregg. Well, Karen, first of all, how are you coping with lockdown and being stuck at home? Because it's a very strange time. It's really, really weird times, to be honest. And um, it's, it's one of those things where I, I work from home quite a lot anyway. Um, but it's almost like you've still got the freedom to do what you want when you want. And, um, and now, that obviously, we, we can't even work from home. It's, it's a little bit weird. Still, you are a head coach amongst us, all, all this uncertainty. How are you dealing with that side of things? It's difficult, really, because obviously you still want to be in touch with the players to see how they are, how they're coping with it, you know, mentally and physically. But, you know, unless unless the players kind of pick up the phone and just want to have a general chat, we're, we're not able to, to, to work along those lines. So it is a little bit frustrating, but um, we prepared the players as best as we could before. We were all put on furlough, so providing them with strength and conditioning programmes they could do at home, shooting programmes, ball work programmes and so on. It's not compulsory, so um, if it's something that those players want to do, then um, then they'll do it. So yeah, I'd like to think that the players are, you know, in that mindset where they wanna they wanna keep themselves in the best physical position, so that hopefully when the league does restart, they're they're in um they're in a position to be able to push on. Absolutely. In terms of that furlough decision, Manchester Thunder have been really transparent about their decision, about how they came to make it, why they've made it, and as well topping up the 20% that's not covered by the government. How important was it from a Thunder perspective to be able to do that? Oh, it's, it's massively important. You know, ultimately, you know, we've, we've said all along, we're not just a netball franchise, we're a family and, and everybody who works for Thunder really feels like we're being looked after at the moment, which is really appreciated. Um, you know, as a franchise, we are a bit of a standalone franchise, so we don't have the connections with the universities or the rugby clubs or anything like that. So for us, um, you know, our income streams are heavily reliable on, on sponsorship and ticket sales. So whilst we haven't got that coming in at the moment, it was really important for the club to be able to, um, to have, you know, to be able to still support us, but make sure that we've got um, a good solid foundation to come back to once all this starts off again. Well, in terms of resumption of the league, we know that um, Vitality Netball Super League and England Netball are looking at different options. We've heard different opinions as well from people as to how a resumption could look. Where do you stand and what's the dream scenario for you in terms of resuming the league? I think there's got to be some kind of way that we can finish this league off and and get it played out. And what that looks like in terms of connecting um, and working alongside the international calendar, I'm not too sure. Uh, But in my dream world, that's what I would want. There's got to be some um, kind of working partnership between, um, you know, all these countries, whether, you know, us, Australia, New Zealand, I've got all the leagues of Suncorp, A and Z, to see if there's some kind of way that we can all work alongside each other in terms of the calendar and what that work, what that looks like so that the players are, are getting what they need from it and the international calendar are getting what they need so I think there has to be a lot of conversations over the coming months really. In terms of Manchester Thunder as a franchise and a business just how difficult would it be for you to you know, survive ultimately what challenges would it pose if you weren't able to run a full season of Super League this year? You know, it'd be it'd be huge. You, know, you look at the sponsorship that we've brought in already this season, and, and I, you know, I'm not 100 percent sure of what those contracts look like. But um, you know, that, it, that we could end up losing that money from sponsorship. We're obviously losing a lot of money from from ticket sales. So for us, it'd be massive in terms of what we were able to do moving forward and supporting the players, not only at Super League level but through that through our pathway as well. 
Karen Gregg with Hannah Wilkes. And Karen's saying, and this is kind of the real issue, isn't it, Tamsin, at the moment, maintaining the league. I know we've said this for the past couple of weeks, but actually all that good work that was put into selling out crowds, promoting the league, TV exposure, but maintaining that going forward. 100%. You know, netball's worked really hard to start moving into this era. We're not fully professional yet, but it's moving through the salary cap and, and paying players. It was really important and really key to taking that next step. So I'm pleased that clubs are being really proactive about this and trying to continue pushing netball on its journey. It's a bit like what we're doing. You know, we, we wanted to do this show to carry on the momentum um, and hopefully uh, by the clubs doing this for their players, it's going to have a real positive effect when we do all finally get back to the netball courts. All right, it's that time of the week where we do our superwoman impression. Step into the phone box and come out wearing completely different clothes. Uh, this week, we're joining up with My Netball Nation and The Netball Show to talk all things Attack End. Back once again, like the renegade master. I don't know if they were all the words <laughs> or where that came from, but at least it probably got someone dancing. Uh, Sarah Bayman from My Netball Nation is with us as we run into our attacking, the last of our three positions or three areas of the court where we're finding our player of the season so far. Not many games this season. Use the hashtag off the court if you agree, disagree, or who you think we should be talking about. So, Sarah Bayman from My Netball Nation. Let's start with... No, I tell you what, we're also going to bring in Andy Lamb from the Netball Show is also with us. I don't think, Andy, I mean, forgive me, it has been three weeks that we've been doing this now. Well... But I don't think we started with you yet, so we're going to start with you now. For the votes from the Netball Show jury for Attacker of the Season, where do your votes go? I'm going to go with Kim Kamehameha from Bath. Um, really enjoyable game, first game of the season. Sorry, Sarah, but when you've got people like Ebony and Serena not taking part in that side at the moment, I'm really keen to look at what she can do to bring on Sophie DL's game, which is obviously going to affect England in the long term as and when things are back up. So, Kim, come in for me. I, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to say you're wrong and I'm not going to say you're right. But, oh. Tamsin Greenway, when we've been doing the, the commentaries on, on Sky this season, the ones that we got to do and watching Team Bath, particularly on that opening day, Kim Kamein was a leader, is a leader. Yeah, she was. And I've actually been really impressed with how Bath have performed so far. And it's mainly down to their attack end. Um, I think a season on, keeping that unit together, having the likes of Rachel feeding um, Sophie DL and Kim Kamein, that rotating circle is becoming a lot more effective. I think last season it had its weaknesses. I think this season they've addressed that. Kamein now is not only exiting the circle really well, but she's been really dominant under the post. Um, and that's the difference. Bath is scoring, uh, I think they're over 70 goals in their first two fixtures, um, which is pretty impressive. And she has a lot to do with that. So yeah, they are going from strength to strength. And I, I've been impressed because it's not, you know, we always talk about the young up and coming stars. Kim Kamein was good last year. She is very good this season. So who have you gone for then? I've actually gone with George Fisher. And um, I think this lockdown is causing me a little bit crazy, craziness. I might actually end up being a Mavericks fan by the end, of, by the time that I'm released. Um, I keep saying it's Mavericks season to lose if we ever get to replay this season. Um, and George Fisher is a big part of that. Again, it's, it's how she's improved. Um, I think we always know George Fisher's great coming onto the ball. She'll shoot from distance. Um, I think one of her weaknesses was how her strength under the post, how she took the ball going towards it. Um, I think she's worked on that. Uh, I think they're feeding the ball a lot better. Your, your, one of your favourite players, Georgia Lees, is letting that ball go. Sasha Corbin's letting that ball go. And George Fisher is lethal. Again, she's pulled the baby out to try and support her vote. Sarah no, Bayman, don't have any this. of that. Don't have any of that. <laughs> I'm not being sucked in by his cuteness. <laughs> Who have you gone for, Sarah? I have gone for Ellie Cardwell from Thunder. Um, I think it was a breakthrough series for her in January with England at the Nations Cup. She's come off the back of that. And I think people probably wouldn't have predicted her to be Thunder's most important player this season. And so far, she's proved that to be the case. She's had some great games. I know when, um, when, like, when we played them um, for Lightning, we were in control of that game and, and she came on and made the difference for Thunder. And I think she's got the ability to, to control attack ends. She can move, she can hold, she can definitely shoot. Um, and she's, she's now got a presence about her where she, she believes how good she is. So um, for me, she's been the most dominant shooter in the league. We said that um, in the South Africa series and just actually her performances for England then with the 
the tri series too. She's just upped it, hasn't she? Yeah, she's just stepped up a level, and I, and I think it's I think a lot of that is confidence. You know, she's always had that ability, and she's always um, worked hard, and you know, she she's a shooter turned into a shooter from a defender, so she's always worked hard on her shooting, but. Um, you can see the confidence that she has now and she wants the ball when, when Thunder are under pressure, when, um, when they're in trouble, it's, it's Ellie Cardwell that's demanding the ball and taking the shots and big shots at that. And that's exactly what you want to see from, from a, a shooter. Uh, Sarah Bayman, we can catch my Netball Nation every Thursday and Friday, is it? Which, yes, which day is around it? then, when, whenever we can be bothered to do it. Very much like <laughs> us, very much like us. Uh, Andy, you are very professional though, uh, oh. regular as clockwork. Thursdays we are as well. Oh, the Thursday fight off. And Tamsin Greenway is staying with us. That has been then our players of the season so far. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Andy. Give us a wave. We a wave and a hey. What more do you want in life? Uh, whilst they go off into this distance, so you can watch back the last three weeks and you can see the defenders, mid quarters, and attackers of the season. If you agree, disagree, use the hashtag off the court. And three weeks later, we'll find something else to come up with to make sure that we get these two back on again. We will come up next with the latest social media, or in three weeks' time, we might have changed that. Who knows? <laughs> Tamsin and I are still here though. <laughs> Thanks to Andy and to Sarah as well. Uh, now Casey Jacks has joined us. We can talk about all things shooting circle because he's, he's destined to be a goal shooter, isn't he? <laughs> well, his dad might have other ideas. He's, he's thinking about rugby, but I don't know. He's going to be around the netball court enough. So how has that shooting circle, apart from Casey getting involved, how has that, that changed over the last, what, 5, 10, 15 years? Yeah, I think there's, um, the circle's adapting, as are all positions on the court at the moment. One of the big things for me are how shooters are using their body, how they're opening up the circle. You know, that circle's got so big now in terms of the size of the players. You know, you're looking internationally, most players are six foot and above, which means the range in there is so huge. Um, and so the way players are using the body, the way they're asking to place the ball, how they're playing off each other has become so important. You can't now just have that typical stand and hold shooter or that typical just churn and rotate. When you were a coach at Wasp, when you were involved at Surrey, and now, of course, with Scotland, too, what are you looking for? What's your, your perfect player in that in that shooting circle? Um, I think there's got to be a mixture. I don't think you can have a one-trick pony anymore. So, you know, there's very few teams around the world now that will have a shooter that will just stay in the circle. Probably thinking about it internationally, it's only really Jamaica that you see that, um, you know, with Fowler Reed staying under the post. But that puts so much pressure on what the attackers have to do out the front. And and that's where sometimes they can fall down. So you can't just have that one that one trick. You've got to be able to come out of the circle. You've got to be able to hold. You've got to be able to shoot from all over as well now. I think that's becoming apparent. Um, and so, yeah, the game is really starting to, to expand again. All right, then take us into that shooting circle. You've got a couple of examples from the World Cup. Yeah, well, I picked out the four semifinals. We'll start with this first clip, and it's New Zealand um, playing here against England. And just watch Maria Falau and... Um, Ekinazio and how they roll around their defenders really early and interestingly when that penalty goes up as well Ekinazio doesn't stop watch her get that foot across Lucera Brown and she's there for that rebound. New Zealand are probably the team in the world at the moment that are using their bodies the best in that circle. If you then go on to the next clip, England clip, watch Joe Hart in the background having a dodgy dodge faffing around and it's just you can't get away with that now against two defenders in the circle. Interestingly as soon as the penalty happens she's bodies up and it allows her then to play off that defender and get that ball under the post. Moving on to South Africa, um, Potahita, she is a bit more static in that circle. She's standing, she's holding, she just keeps adjusting her angle until that ball is able to go over the top. So all completely different movements as we go along. And finally, looking at Australia when it's weights and wood in there, that first movement, they get eaten alive and they're just trying to run. And Australia have all been about like cut and drive and you can't just get away with that movement. Um, there's no good angle, there's no good option. Interestingly, when it goes out of court, then look at weight, she goes back to that stronghold and eventually it opens up her. And it's so key how players are using their body, how early they're using their body is really important. And then what the feeder is seeing. Out of all those great shooters, goal attacks that we, we've seen in those clips, go on then, who's your perfect two? That's really unfair. 
Oh, no, no. And I think it's about partnerships. I think you've absolutely nailed it now. It's not just about having your basset under the post or your fowler read or your heart, and it's how they work together. I've been talking about heart and the house being how effective they are as a partnership. I think Ekinazio and Falau absolutely nailed it at the World Cup, which is why they're world champions. So it can't just be about that one person. It's how you both play off each other. And it's actually given hope again that we don't have to go to that six foot seven shooter under the post. Yes, that can be effective. You can be just effective with moving and rotating as long as you understand how to use your body. Your views, as always, welcome. Use the hashtag off the court. Let's hear now from one of the world's best, Peace Proskovia. How blessed were we back in 2015 when she came to play in the netball Super League? Success with Loughborough Lightning meant that come 2019, she was off to Australia to play for Sunshine Coast Lightning. It's from Australia she joined us, but she's currently self-isolating. I know I say this a lot, but it is a true pleasure talking to you, Peace. How are you? Is, is everything all right? Yeah, everything is okay. At the start, yes, it was frustrating to be isolated on your own. But one of the major things I am doing is I was also studying a postgraduate certificate in business research. So I've decided that that is now what I'm going to fully commit myself to, despite my other training programs. I've got no doubt you'll come out of this. You'll be a doctor. You might be a dame like, like Nolene Tarua. You'll have achieved all of that. Fingers crossed, I'll try my best. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about slightly more distracting times when you were actually playing netball. It's only a few months ago that you were on that, that court in the grand final in Australia. It was a great pleasure to actually get to finals because when I first got to this league, I, I was kind of nervous of what the outcome would be at the end. But well, when we just got into the system and making it to that finals, to me, that was great. My team is a very awesome team. I think two years they had the championship in a row and the girls have that high spirit of performance and we all blended in well together. What is it about Nolene that gets the best out of all these players? Nolene is a people's person and her approach of leadership is kind of a participatory one whereby she's more into finding out what is good for the players instead of what she wants to impose on the players. Personally, um, she has kind of helped me build my confidence particularly when i got here only to realize the profiles of the girls i'm playing with and these are world top players i kind of freaked out and that made me panic a bit but she guided me into it and took me into it slowly and that was how it worked out for me was it a step up was it different to playing in the super league here in the uk the slight difference was just the high intensity bit of it. And then coming back to the team level, it's just the highly competitive environment, which to me is good because nothing challenges, challenges you and then it doesn't change you. And to me, I take it positively and I'm blessed to have that opportunity. We talk about your, your big shoes to fill at Loughborough Lightning. What have you made of Mary's entrance to the big stage? Her good performance makes me feel proud too because if you've always been in an environment where everything has been good and you've loved it, living it is always hard. But when someone fills up your gap and the person is as good as you are, you feel less pain with it and I'm grateful for Mary being there. At least there is a guarantee that Uganda has a great future in her. That has always been my dream to help groom someone that will take over from me such that the sport keeps developing in Uganda. And I think as experienced players that are about to retire, if we help develop the young, that's something that will help the sports grow and continues to grow. Say that the time you leave, there's no plans to retire just yet, are there? I'm going to keep playing for as long as I can but the future is in her hand and in the hands of the young upcoming players. When you look at this Uganda side, do you realistically think that, that your Uganda can get to the top of the world? In this era, nothing is impossible. And I remember talking to Pumza one time and I was like, if South Africa came up with a big league that would actually get these players and make them play in this league and we develop it there, what would happen because I believe that will create more opportunities for the girls and it would 
develop their sports and as it's developing their sport it will develop them individually we've been putting together our defenders mid-quarters this week we're looking at attackers have you had a look at, at the, the early rounds here of the netball super league and who in terms of in your attacking circle has really stood out for you if you look at ellie cadwell and then george fisher they are equally excellent players um that are very competitive. At this point, I would choose Ellie Cadwell. She's just a big threat under there. The few times I've played on the opposition team to her while I was in the UK, I always got scared of her because her error rate generally is very low. And she's this kind of player that keeps going up to the end. Peace, Proscovia. It has been an absolute delight, a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on Off The Court. Peace, Proscovia. We'll hear a bit more from her come the end of the show. How do you rate Peace and how she's adapted to life in Australia? Uh, well, she gave me many headaches as a coach, having to sort of tactically work out how to stop her. And honestly, most of the time it wasn't about stopping her, it was stopping the players out in front of her because she's so effective. And, you know, she's very humble. She is one of the best shooters in the world, which is why she got that opportunity. Um, Nolene, I think it's very clear, knows her stuff. Uh, she's so unorthodox, the way she holds, she's one of the strongest players in the game of taking the ball. Um, and I'm so pleased for her that she got her chance out in Suncorp. Yeah, she actually spent about four hours with me just because I didn't want to hang up. You hang up, no, you hang up. Um, so hopefully <laughs> we'll hear much more and see much more from Peace over the coming weeks across Sky Sports. Remember, you can find out the latest at Sky Netball on social media and on the Sky Sports Netball page. Check it out online. Loads more content on there. Right, to your questions. Hashtag off the court. Let's start with this corker from Queenie, then Tamsin. She asks, Tamsin, can you give a simple explanation of what an invasion game is? Also, any good invasion games for defence work? Thanks, thumbs up emoji. <laughs> um, yeah, they're great games. We often use them as warm-ups, thinking about trying to attack a certain space or invade a certain area. You can be as creative as you like. You can add in shooting at the end. Uh, one of my favourites we used to do was steal the cone game. So you'd have cones lined up along an area and a team would have to try and navigate their way through. Um, what's really great for defence is how they have to work together. So you'll often find that they, they split off and they go very individual. So trying to get um, them to almost defend in certain areas, work together as a partnership, have to target certain people. Um, yeah, loads of, of, of little games like that are great. You can do it as either as a big team drill or a short, um, short, short sharp-sided games. Thank you, Queenie. Great question. And uh, I'll get you to repeat that back to me over the coming weeks. Right, some of the other questions <laughs> then that have come up via social. What's more important, the result or the way in which you perform, says Andrew. Always, always the result, right? Uh, Sadie <laughs> says, if you were coaching a team at the moment, what would be your plan? Uh, what would you be getting them to do? And this one from Rupert, the last of your questions at the moment. My question is, should we have a two or three point shot from outside the circle, fast fives style? Rupert, of course, part of our commentary team here on Sky. So uh, I think it's only fair that we answer his question first. Yeah, I don't want it outside the circle. I'm quite happy to explore it inside the circle as a two point from slightly further out. Um, I've said that before, I get a lot of hate for doing it, but you know, I'm all, all more for a bit of controversy. And Sadie asking if you were coaching a team at the moment, you are clearly with, with Scotland, but what Scotland, would you be yeah. getting them to do? And we've had loads of questions in for you for, for shooting drills, and that's the focus yeah. of your drill this week. Yeah, interestingly, so um, just it's all about them keeping motivated, making sure they're training, keeping their fitness up, but coming up with different ideas. And I've started to speak to the Scottish players about things that they want to individually work on. And anybody following me on social, I'm trying to put different ideas out there for individual skills that you can hone in and practice at the moment. But, you know, it's all very general stuff, really, because, you know, we're all on our own. We're all limited to what we can do. But upskill, movement, fitness, keeping happy. So that's what you've done this week on your drill? Uh, this week is about the shooters, so upskilling in that circle, thinking about using your body. Always thinking about using my body and what Oops. I'm going to consume. Here's Tamsin's <laughs> drill. Okay, shooters, this one's for you. It's all about how you use your body. Key thing about this is bodying up front on. We all like to go and get butts in there, but it's not about that. It's about chest up and bodying on, and it's how long you stay on the, on the defender, the person you're trying to block off, because if you come off too soon, it's so easy to go around. So we're going to start with just an active defender. We're going to come in, bump, and come off. And it's the angle you come off. So don't come off flat where they can go for the ball, but really hold off and then come onto it. So here you might get your leg around and then bump onto the cone. Right, come and start in this position. Come off, 
and then onto the cone, straight arm block up, <laughs> and then onto the cone, you can come out now, okay, got my next trusty assistant, we're rising. toward isolation, so same thing, but use that timing on there, get in there, bump, and then off the, for the ball, on in a strong hold, but making sure we're not pushing off, so even though our arms are on there, and think about how you come onto that ball, that's me, Okay, last one. So it's going to come in as well. You're going to start in the middle. Now pat the back. You're going to mix it up. So you're going to play on for one. It might be you come out, lock off, and then on. So if your defender's got you in a bad place, you're working together with your little shooter. You come forward, stop, and then onto the ball. If you know you've got a good block, bump, onto the ball. Might be there, roll quickly, stop, onto it. Last one. We're in here, pick off the back, come forward, and then on. All about feet, body, keeping upright. Enjoy. Right, quickly before we go then, let's get to some of your social. This was brilliant from Chilton Emeralds Netball. Their Netball Isolation 7. Wing attack, Natalie Hay Thorn Thwaite. At centre, I've got Tamsin Greenway. Wing defence, I've got Jade Clark. Goal defence, Layla Guscott. The main thing to talk about is you're a centre. I know, what were they thinking? One coach tried it once, very unsuccessfully against Jamaica, it never happened again. <laughs> uh, this is great from Helen Housby. She's been doing her own isolation tips and tricks. We know she's a juggler. She's right up there with Gabs Marshall for her juggling skills. Yeah, I'm Rachel Dunn. That's impressive. I didn't know how we had that in our locker. Not a bad view, is it, for isolation, is it? <laughs> yeah, she does all right. Uh, she's isolating well. Uh, next up, South Africa, and we're talking about some of the tips and things that you can do. This is Carla uh, Pretorius with some of her trills. And, and this, is, this is just showing, isn't it, actually, that you can use just a small space. I take it this is a garage area and get yeah. the most out of it. Totally, and, and it's showing what elite players do, you know, I'm being asked all the time what you should be doing. Look, look at her footwork skills, she's practicing the basics, it's all the stuff I've said it before, you don't have time to do in your hour, two hour club training session. Get practicing out, upskill, body angles, fitness, speed of footwork, anything that's going to add to your game, jumping, plyometrics, so important. Honestly, it'll make a huge difference when you come back to play. I love Casey Jack's uh, approving there. Cat to Avati, the brilliant Cat to Avati, who's currently isolating in Italy with her husband and uh, her baby boy too. Uh, this was doing the rounds from at netballers. Goal shooters are made for this, staying in the one spot and getting applauded for it. Hashtag stay at home. I feel attacked, says Cat. She's well worth following on social media as well. Uh, well done to Hannah Passmore. She won Surrey Storm's uh, final. In, she's got 20 goals, was the winner. I think five of them at least as well. This has been keeping everyone entertained over the past couple of weeks. Well done, Surrey Storm and Hannah yeah. Passmore showing like her scores. Well, I, I picked her. I picked yeah. her and Lindsay Herbert. Just saying. <laughs> Just hashtag. Uh, and Team Bath Netball as well. Just one of the many clubs that are pumping out live stuff. But they've got live S&C classes that you can join into. I swerve that, I think, for this week at least. And this is the final one to Wasps Netball. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's been doing the, the body coach at home and it was fancy dress, wasn't it, last Friday? Yeah. Well, what did you wear for fancy dress? Me. Is this you? Uh, no. <laughs> I wish. It's only, if only I had that suit. Uh, Sarah Taylor there, I'm a Wasp manager doing a grand job. It shows her personality off. Um, that was going around the group chat and uh, the players were, were very happy seeing that which means this time next week that will be you dressed as something else you've got to do it now we've said it so hashtag off the court if there's anything you'd like to see no that sounds so wrong anything you'd like yeah, to see well. dressing up in uh, no no manage the thunder bear you could be thunder bear next week right he's a real bear he has feelings she won't be doing that that's it from us uh, but before we go tamsin have a lovely week thank you you too Last word, though, doesn't go to the adorable Casey Jacks. He should have the last word on everything. It does, in fact, go to our own ray of sunshine. Just to leave you with some inspiration for the next seven days, we leave you with peace, prosperity. Have a good week. Bye for now. The key right now is to just take every single day the way it is. And when we find ourselves stressed, we should always remember that there are so many positives in life that happened before this scenario came and we should dwell more on the positives in life than the negatives that are happening. Right now, it's better to live a life of faith than a life of fear. And what faith does is that it makes you take every single day the way it is. And that way, 
you stop stressing. This quarantine is for the greater good of everyone. It may be painful, just like in sports, the process to getting there is painful, but the route is so sweet to enjoy. If we obey the rules that they give us, we will get back again and enjoy. As a player, we miss being out there representing everyone and then jumping and making you happy, but just know, fingers crossed, all this is going to be good and we will come out and make you proud again. Lots of love. Sky Sports, feel it all.